Hi, welcome to episode 6 of Enigmas of the English Alphabet. In previous episodes, we discussed how the English language was especially influenced by the Norman Conquest and begun to vary its pronunciation, ceasing to be a regular language and becoming an irregular language. A regular language is one which follows the basic rules of the alphabet and represents each sound with a single symbol, following specific rules and avoiding ambiguities. An irregular language does not follow rules and requires extensive interpretation to determine the sounds represented in its writing. Here we can see some old English writing and they use symbols that are not in use today. Let us now look at the changes brought by the great vowel shift on the vocalic sounds of English and how, even today, they are a source of confusion, especially for the student of English as a second language. The Great Vowel Shift happened between 1400 and 1700 CE. These shifts are a source of ongoing scholarly discussion among linguists who give complicated theories to explain them. But in reality, there is no consensus as to what happened and why. So before the Great Vowel Shift, the sounds for the vowels represented in the alphabet were A, E, E, O, U. After the Great Vowel Shift, A, E, I, O, U, in the alphabet. But in reality, only the long vowels were affected. The sounds, the sounds of the old vowels even though a little different than in Latin, can still be seen in most English words. For example, tap, where we can identify the sound of the A, ah, tap. The great vowel shift influenced the long or stressed vowels. Let's see some examples. We can see the word at here, at. At, we still can identify the A, ah, at, but in the word eight, a t e, the a becomes a. Now, there is an old rule in Latin that says that when there are two vowels in a word and they are divided by one consonant, the first vowel is long and the second is short. Now, let's see this other word, dinner, d i n n e r. In this word, we see two consonants separating two vowels. So, according to this old rule, they become both short. And there you go. They are pronounced dinner, just like in old Latin, dinner. However, in diner, D-I-N-E-R, there's only one consonant between the I and the E. So, the I becomes long, and it's now pronounced diner. Another curious fact is that the long vowel sounds are not uniform in the English-speaking world, except for the long E, which became practically the Latin E. So, E became E. Let's see an example in the word mate. M-A-T-E. Here, the A is long, so, so it's pronounced A, mate. So, in the U.S., it would be pronounced mate. However, in Australia, the pronunciation is more like might. As you can see, we can hear the A ah still surviving there and a schwa showing. So it is might, might. As we were saying, the sounds are not standard. So A in other places is I. I was recently in England and I asked the driver to take me to the Victoria and Albert Museum and he said, Oh, V and I, V and I. <laughs> to, to me, it was at the beginning difficult to understand, but then I, I, I realized he says I. And that's probably the oldest pronunciation of the long A, I. At least we still hear the A ah in that sound. As we were saying, the E is more standard. So it is pronounced in a similar way most everywhere. However, there are places where it simply is not pronounced as a long E. It's pronounced E to add to the confusion. 
I in many places is pronounced oi. Oi. Or oi. You still see like we still hear the schwa and then the e. Oi. O. O. Some places is o. And in some places is o. Right? So it's not standard. And you is a little more common. But some places you'll hear it pronounced ew, and in some places it's ew, and in some places it's you. Now, these rules were very inconvenient because it's very easy to lose track of which vowels are long and which vowels are short just by looking at how many consonants were in there. So the old scribes would use a macron, because here's a macron. A macron is a line put on top of a vowel to represent that it is a long vowel when there was doubt. Now, the scribes were trying to standardize the writing of English, even though at this time, English pronunciation and, and writing fluctuated a lot. So William Caxton, who was the first person to use a printing machine to print books, decided to not pay attention to any of these rules and any of these special symbols and just represent the words in the simplest way and he ended up being the most powerful force on deciding how to spell the words in English. All these rules about how many consonants are there and the concept of which vowels were long and which vowels were short became less clear. Also, as English evolved as a language, it incorporated sounds from other languages, but mainly from Latin. It is estimated that more than 85% of the words in English come from Latin. Now, let's take a look at how some of these words were adapted in English. So look at the word item, right? In the word item, we see it's spelled I-T-E-M. The first I, there is one consonant between the I and the E. That makes the I long. And yes, we can see it's pronounced item. Now, in Latin, it would be pronounced item, right? The I would be long. Just, it just means I pronounce it a little longer. So it would be item. Instead, in English, it became item. Now, at that point, it's still clear. You know, the first one is long, the second one is short. Look at the word problem. The word problem, there are two consonants between the vowels. So they're both short. And yes, they're problem. They still follow the Latin pronunciation. However, the Latin pronunciation will have an A at the end. It would be problema. Problema. In English, the last A was lost, but we could still see problem. Now let's look at another word. Idea. The word idea, there's a D between the I and the E. However, they both became long. So in Latin, the word, would be, the word would be pronounced idea. However, in English, the I and the E, for some reason, both became long. So it ended up being pronounced idea. Two long vowels, which now contradicts the basic rule. There's supposed to be only one long vowel in word. Here there are two. And now, when we look at the word diabetes, right, the word diabetes, it's written D-I-A-B-E-T-E-S. In Latin, this would, this would be pronounced diabetes. Very simple. Just follow the rules of the alphabet. Diabetes. Now, in English, we can see one long vowel in I and then two long vowels in the last two E. Only the A stays short. And it's pronounced diabetes. Now, why? Now, again, this contradicts what a long vowel is. There should be only one long vowel in the word. So this is just to illustrate that with time, they just lost track of when a vowel should be long and when a vowel should be short. And then they started to use the long and short sounds in a way that seems random. Now, the great vowel shift, as we were mentioning, has not been applied in a standard way. 
And sometimes we can hear the same word pronounced with a long vowel and with a short vowel, with a long vowel in some places and with a short vowel in other places. There are some curious word, milady, which comes from my lady, but ends up being pronounced with a short vowel in the I. So milady is the way. So it comes from my lady, but the I became short, so it's milady. Before the great vowel shift, mi lady was pronounced all with short vowels. So it would be mi lady. And then eventually became mi lady. Some other examples are potato and potato, tomato and tomato, and tomato, which a famous vice president wrote with an E at the end. So it would look like a toe. We see this long vowel shift still being a source of disagreement all over the English world. Now let's see how this great vowel shift can affect international speakers. I recently attended a conference on Biblical Hebrew. Now let's remember that the original pronunciation in Hebrew of the word David, King David, is David, which is also the way it's pronounced in the majority of languages except of English. So King David or King David is pronounced David in Spanish, David in Hebrew, and Davide in Italian. So in this conference, we could see how international speakers, when they switch to English, they have to change the pronunciation from David to David. Even an Australian speaker will pronounce David, David, instead of David. David is closer to the original David. Today, many international conferences and many courses in non-English speaking countries are held in English and giving the correct pronunciation in English is always a big challenge. If the great vowel shift had not happened, all the attendees would have simply pronounced David. The differences between long and short vowels are not the only source of confusion for the learner of English. In the next episode, we will study other vowel sounds in English, such as the open O and the closed A, whose sounds are very similar and very difficult to differentiate for a person who does not speak English as a mother tongue. I invite you to visit my site enigmasofenglish.com and buy my book where I explain all these sounds and represent them in an easy to learn way, giving the corresponding positions of the mouth. Thank you.